I would like to introduce our final speaker in uh, this session, um, Dr. L uh, Laura Woodward. Uh, I'm a bit involved in this because uh, Laura, I was her supervisor for a PhD, uh, which she did here at Melbourne. Um, her, uh, and she's working in the whole area of the project title, The Introverted Kinetic Sculpture, How It Moved. Um, is, uh, it came, is directly out of her PhD. Um, her kinetic installations have been exhibited in solo and group exhibitions throughout Australia. Um, and um, many, and I, I think one of the things I've noticed here is we've had so many s people who have a sculptural practice who are actually presenting today. And so, again, uh, Laura's a wide range of, of um, solo and group shows, mainly here in Melbourne, but now s setting out into the world, as well as engaging in um, now in the realm of publication. So I'd like to in invite Laura where she's somewhere here. Um, uh, the introverted kinetic sculpture, how it moves. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Barb. Uh, so my practice-led PhD project, the introverted kinetic sculpture, identified and explored the concept of introversion within kinetic sculptural practice. I used the term introverted kinetic sculpture to describe the body of work developed throughout my PhD project. For the next few minutes, you'll see a brief documentation of each of the works developed early in the project to give some context to later works that I will then discuss and show in more detail. The thesis, which, com which comprised exhibition and dissertation, focused on two areas within kinetic sculpture, the manifestation of circularly causal autopoetic systems embodied in specific kinetic sculptural installations, and the proposition that, through specific behaviours that emerge from this autopoetic logic, the viewer's body may recognise the introverted kinetic sculpture as a body, opening up the potential for empathic engagement between viewer and installation. Within both the exhibition and the dissertation which comprised my thesis, Introverted kinetic sculptures are kinetic sculptures defined by specific qualities of their systems, being circularly causal autopoetic systems with analog manifestations, and the environmental conditions through which these systems emerge, articulated as the medium of the introverted kinetic sculpture. These specific qualities allow each individual introverted kinetic sculpture to function as a concrete site through which to explore post-humanist considerations of agency, medium, systems, and empathy in the kinetic work of art. In my presentation today, I will discuss particular aspects of what constituted introverted systems that emerged within the artworks. In particular, I will focus upon two considerations from neo-cybernetic discourse, otherwise known as second-order systems theory, of relevance to my research project. These are Nicholas Luhmann's conception of medium and form and Maturana and Varela's conception of autopoiesis. I will then focus upon the ways in which the project's final form, including exhibition and dissertation, emulated the artwork's introverted systems. The project itself was eventually revealed as an introverted system with similar characteristics to those systems at play in each artwork. Through these explorations of my PhD project, my discussion will touch upon the ways in which particular language and concepts from neo-cybernetic discourse can be applied to the practice-led PhD project. So, one of the neo-cybernetic considerations of relevance to the project, and specifically to my discussion today, is neo-cyberneticist Nicholas, Luhmann, Nicholas Luhmann's conceptions of medium and form as he articulated in The Medium of Art in 1987, and of decomplexification, as he articulated in Social Systems in 1984. To illustrate these concepts, you'll now see documentation of the work Web, which manifested across four iterations in the six months leading up to my examination exhibition. In Lumen's neo-cybernetic framework, medium goes beyond simply constituting the material from which a work of art is made. Instead, medium is the combination of elements 
from which a work emerges, essentially the work's environment. In this sense, the material of the work of art is an element in that work's medium, as are other factors such as the gallery space, the artist's skills, and so on. Form, to lumen, is the work, in other words, the system, that emerges from this medium, this environment. Medium, therefore, is not the matter-bound material often used in art speak, but is instead the environment from which the form, the work of art, emerges. Lumen explains this with the analogy of sound. Sound requires the medium of air through which to travel to situated observing bodies. This analogy is valuable to envisage the scope of what medium in the introverted kinetic sculpture and in artworks more generally might constitute and thus contribute. The simplification or decomplexification following Lumen of a system is the neo-cybernetic assertion that any system or form in Lumen's terms that emerges within an environment is necessarily and inherently less complex than that environment. So in the context of this project, form is the work of art, the system, which emerges through decomplexification of its medium, its environment. This simplification of form, the system, from medium, the environment, is a fundamental postulate of neo-cybernetic discourse. So, as a system takes form from its environment, it decomplexifies the medium. This tendency of the system to move towards decomplexification was particularly evident within the four iterations of Webb. The shifts visible across these four iterations of the work's spatial shrinking, of reductions in its motive distance and motive force, are evidence of a system working its way towards efficiency, towards the simplest solutions necessary for the system's ongoing continuation. Across four iterations, Webb exhibited those qualities fundamental to Maturana and Varela's conception of autopoiesis, which I will shortly discuss, and to later developments such as those of Lumen, where the system strives towards decomplexification of its environmental complexity. What was particularly visible in Webb due to the nature of re-exhibiting and thus reconfiguring the work several times over six months is that this evolutionary movement towards ever-efficient simplification seems to assert itself most strongly in the recurrent responsiveness to each new site, each new opportunity for further decomplexification. Shifting to another key consideration. Autopoiesis is a key consideration in discussing neo-cybernetics. Autopoiesis describes a system that is autonomous, operationally closed, and self-referring. The term autopoiesis emerged early in neo-cybernetic discourse, coined collaboratively in 1980 by Chilean biologist and philosopher Humberto Maturana and Chilean biologist, philosopher, and neuroscientist Francesco Varela. It became a fundamental focus of this PhD project when it became apparent that those circularly causal systems emerging within the kinetic sculptures functioned as basic autopoetic systems. As clarified by post-human theorist Carrie Wolfe, the autopoetic system is open in its structure but closed in its organisation. In Autopoiesis, a Theory of Living Organisations, Milan Zeleni, a professor who applies cybernetic and autopoetic thinking to organisational and business management structures, clarifies this consideration. He says, it should be recalled here that organisational closure of autopoetic systems is meant in the sense of circularity and has nothing to do with the openness of such systems with respect to environmental inputs or perturbations. Structure refers to the realisation of the organisation in a particular space of components. Thus, structure is not only a result of a system's interaction with its environment, but more fundamentally of its underlying organisation. Within this PhD project, autopoiesis, as defined by Maturana and Varela, was present in the works Undoing, which you saw a short snippet of before, Web and Vessel, which you'll see later on. Until discovering the term autopoiesis, I had, as did Maturana and Varela prior to, 
prior to coining the term, used terms such as looping and self-regulating to describe these systems. Autopoiesis, however, more sufficiently defines the breadth and boundaries of the systems of interest to this thesis. Autopoiesis describes not only the mode of ongoing action, a circularly causal sequence in which each component responds to another component and then impacts upon the next, but also, but also the nature of the system. This nature, in essence, is one of self-containment and self-production, a system that is open in structure, being the material nature of the various elements that are affected by their inherent nature and their environment, but closed in its organisation, the self-referential logic that the system uses to filter environmental complexity, or in Lumen's terms, the decomplexification of its medium. I was talking too fast. <laughs> this last version of Web was actually part of the PhD examination exhibition. Um, so what you'll now see are scans, uh, scanned imagery from my sketchbook uh, showing the development of Underwing, which was an earlier work followed by documentation of the completed work. Uh, so through the exploration of systems within the project, I developed the term introverted systems to describe those systems emerging within the introverted kinetic sculptures. Hang on, I'm in the wrong spot, sorry. So what I have here is, I jumped ahead. Um, so what I've tried to do here is actually to give some sense of the, the nature of a circularly causal sequence through using the circuitry from underwing and, um, and the, some of the components, which you would have seen in that brief snippet earlier. So what you're gonna see here is a, there are three um, elements from the work. In the actual work, there are seven, but within, um, within, uh, within this, the three is enough to show circular causality. So what's happening here is the, there's water pumping from one side of the lever to the other and that makes it tip over. When it tips over, a switch is triggered, which sets off a relay, which then turns two other switches, which changes the polarity of the pump to the next one, which allows it to pump water from one side to the next of the next unit. So that one's starting to do that now. It'll now hit its switch which will set off the relay when it gets to it, which will then change the polarity of the pump pumping to the third unit. What is also happening um, when it continues to tip over, like when the middle unit continues to tip over, the little red markers will show where it's actually hitting a limit switch. The limit switch then stop, opens a switch up in the other circuit, which allows it to stop and then it can't actually start again until the polarity gets switched back. The polarity running between the last unit and the first one is, is opposed to the other polarities. It's switched around the other way, so that actually allows the system to reverse on itself and to come back. It's, in doing this, I discovered that it's actually a really complex thing to try and describe. <laughs> and I was doing my own head in trying to remember how it worked for that purpose. So. Okay, <clears throat> so after this, you'll see scans, scanned imagery from my sketchbook showing the, development, uh, showing the development of this work followed by documentation of the actual finished work. So as I mentioned before, through the exploration of systems within the project, I developed the term introverted systems to describe those systems emerging within the introverted kinetic sculptures. Introverted systems are autopoietic systems with primarily analog qualities, which manifest within boundaries such as architecture, exhibition duration, and material engagement, which are brought about by their existence as works of art. These boundaries are elements within, its, within the medium, the environment from which the artworks form, from which the system emerges. 
These neo-cybernetic considerations explored within this research project developed directly in response to those introverted systems emerging within the individual works of art. However, as I will now expand upon, it became apparent towards the end of the project that the project itself as a self-contained entity also displayed qualities of an introverted system. One of the research questions that the thesis investigated was, how does the application and embodiment of an autopoetic system impact upon the development of the kinetic work, its aesthetics, its success, and its experiential impact? This investigation was undertaken through productive and experimental in-studio, in-exhibition, and in-writing forms. However, this research question, alongside the others which I haven't discussed today, was not fully articulated and refined until the very end of the research project. Instead, sparked through in-studio and in-exhibition experiments, experiences and observations, the research questions gradually emerged alongside the development of the introverted kinetic sculptures. For example, this research question's primary focus was autopoiesis, However, whilst the first circularly causal autopoetic system emerged early in the project in Underwing, it was not until much later, upon reflection and further research, that the circular causality's full relevance within the project became apparent. It was later still when neo-cybernetic language was discovered which provided a definitive means of identifying and clarifying the autopoetic systems emerging in the project as introverted systems and that, therefore, the research questions could actually begin to be formally articulated. Thus, it is clear that these research questions, in a pre-rational, responsive, and non-articulated form, were consistently explored throughout the project and are responsible for driving the project's emergence. This co-emergence of the works of art and the research questions provides an interesting way in which to revisit the concept of medium as put forward by Lumen. In the context of a research project, it is valid to assume that the research questions in some way comprise the medium from which the research elicits form. However, in the context of this project, it was evident that though the research questions from the beginning formed part of the medium through which the project grew, the project's form, in other words, the development of the introverted kinetic sculptures and the writing, and the way in which each subsequent individual emergence impacted upon the project's direction constituted the medium in which they express it, expressed themselves, to use Lumen's words. In other words, the project's form became part of the medium from which the research questions took form and vice versa. Within the practice-led research project, formulation of the research questions must take the often generative nature of the studio practice into account. Thus, considering the research project and the formulation of the research questions in light of Lumen's assertions, provides a means to articulate this particular relationship between the research questions and the practice-led research project. This relationship is an example of the way in which form, in this case the research project, arises through selection from the possibilities offered by a medium in this case, the research questions, and equally that the form, the project, actually and firstly constitutes the medium, the questions, in which it expresses itself. In other words, both the research project and the research questions are co-responsible and necessary for the co-constitution, the co-formation of the other. So I'll now show you sketches and animations that relate to the final work developed in the project, Vessel. Um, you'll see pages from my sketchbook, compositions from some of the CAD drawings um, uh, that developed the work, and then another animation with another attempt to try and show a circularly causal system. Um, so another way to consider how the research project, including the research questions, took form is through the concept of the introverted system. The understanding of the introverted system, fundamental to the project, developed not from a theoretical position, but through responsive in-studio processes and research. 
Through this research and reflection upon the development of these experiments, deeper exploration beyond the studio became feasible. Writing, a generative and positive undertaking to expand upon the in-studio research, is a means of unpacking these responsive in-studio actions and thus has been fundamental to this PhD project. The inter-responsive relationship occurring in the studio and in the writing became particularly apparent in the reflection and exploration of systems which began in the studio. Attempts to articulate these emergent systems in the writing quickly uncovered the limitations of only understanding systems through the studio, emphasising the need to expand upon the project's considerations beyond in-studio experiences. This realisation highlighted one of the primary challenges in practice-led research. As a practising artist, the in-studio and in-exhibition uh, actions are often responsively undertaken. We make decisions responsively within the studio, studio, often thinking without knowing, to borrow from Barb. We come to the studio within a research context or not, with presuppositions of years of practice, carrying with us aspects of our practice that are so inherent and, and embedded that we no longer see them. For the artist as researcher, these inherencies or these exhaustively practised practices are difficult to identify and to then research, for they originate beyond or before decisive awareness. Within this PhD project, it was through the intertwining of in-studio and in-writing research, the breaking down of ideas afforded by different research modes, that practices or inherencies brought to the project sorry, could be positively explored. Expanding the research beyond the studio to the act of writing allowed the role of systems within the PhD project and the impact of these upon responsive in-studio decisions to be understood in further depth. Through this research, understandings of systems initially developed in the studio were strengthened and deepened through engagement with neo-cybernetic discourse. This experience exemplified the ways in which the two forms of research can integrate, generating new approaches and potentially opening up space for contribution to new knowledge. Initial attempts to understand neo-cybernetic discourse were frustrating. The language of systems theory was initially so opaque, uh, so abstract as to be completely opaque. It was only through specific experiences with systems in the studio uh, that, and in the gallery, experiences that occurred concurrent with the theoretical reading, that the grasping of the fundamental basis of neo-cybernetics occurred. One incident during the first iteration of Webb, for example, showed very clearly the impact upon a system of perturbations or disruptions that go beyond what the system can absorb and compensate for. In this case, the perturbation was greater than the system's ability to compensate and the system broke down. These understandings then opened up further conceptual, theoretical and practical possibilities within both the studio and written aspects of the project. What I'm now going to show you is another animation of the system um, from Vessel. Vessel was um, quite a leap at the end of the project in that the system running it was in, is entirely mechanical. So Vessel also relies on water shifting from one vessel to another and therefore um, pulling the lever over, as you can see in that bottom unit there. But the actual um, pulling of the lever turned a physical water switch which would change the direction of the water running to the next unit. What well, you'll see come up in a moment is um, showing the water running to each unit. So in each of these three units, in the middle is a water switch with the lever on it, and then there's a line running from the lever to each of the pulleys through a series of pulleys. There's no line there because I couldn't work out how to animate it, but you can imagine it. Um, and there's water pumping through two hoses to each water switch but the direction of that water doesn't change. It just pumps. So they're kind of dumb pumps in that way. They're just running. Um, the water switch then directs water to the two vessels. In, so that's showing the water coming into the water switches. The water switches then direct water into the two vessels for the next unit. So this is running in an anti-clockwise motion. It will start up in a moment. 
So what you're going to see firstly is water coming from the top left hand unit as it tips over, heading towards pumping out of the left unit through that water switch and into the right unit of the bottom one, gradually pulling the lever across. When the lever reaches the midway point, it starts water up to the next pair. This is similar to underwing in that it actually, um, the next action is the opposite. So it comes from the top right to the top left in the opposite direction, which is how it has circular causality because it, it um, means the system can keep going. They tip from one way to the other. So it was at the crucial point where the in-studio and the in-writing research fully meshed that the fundamental role of systems within the project became clear. The exposure of this potential led to a deeper exploration of systems than was possible in the physical reality of the studio. This stronger understanding of systems generated between the in-studio and the in-writing research modes started to fill problematic gaps in other aspects of the research. Exploration of systems through theoretical research and writing allowed the articulation, enlightenment and resolution of connections previously only intuited within the studio aspect of the research. These connections sparked responsively in the studio and then rediscovered and built upon in the writing embedded the project as genuinely practice led. The project functioned in the layering of in-studio processes, exhibitions, thinking and writing. The writing did not trail the work, nor did it exist in the gap between practice and theory, but instead it functioned in the analogue, in variabilities through making, exhibiting and theory. The practice did not solely lead. At times, particularly as the project matured, the studio practice responded directly to the theoretical understandings being developed through the writing. These theoretical understandings then fed back into the work and the introverted kinetic sculptures were revealed as concrete testing sites for particular considerations of neo-cybernetic discourse. Thus, not only did introverted systems develop in the artworks, embodying points at which autopoiesis and a striving towards the analogue coalesced, but the project methodology allowed the project itself to develop as an autopoetic system, both producing and being generated by the project itself. The research project was thus revealed as another introverted system, emulating in its formation those systems that emerged within it through the introverted kinetic sculptures. To expand, similar to the introverted systems in each introverted kinetic sculpture, the project was open in its structure, its analogue manifestations forming through the sets of relations between its components, being sculptures, studio experiments, research, writing, and so on. These relationships grew through the self-referential logic that the system, the project, used to filter, to decomplexify its environmental complexity, its medium. As in the introverted kinetic sculptures, each component within the project as a system, be it artwork or written work, was both responsive and causal. That is, each step within and between the various aspects of the project was caused by the previous and impacted upon the next. Envisaging the research project as an autopoetic introverted system allows space to consider the way in which such projects can be so hard to grasp and comprehend early on. Through its autonomy, the project generates its own form over many years. The medium from which it takes form comprises many elements ideas, materials, experiments, and so on. Over time, the project decomplexifies, taking form from its medium. It displays qualities of recurrent responsiveness, reshaping, reforming, restructuring, and therefore decomplexifying, as seen in the multiple iterations of web. As in other autopoetic systems, it absorbs, or in some cases fails to absorb, perturbations, such as discovering previous research that undermines a particular argument, or um, an artwork emerging that in no way supports the position that you're developing. Research questions, though present throughout, take articulate form alongside the artworks which they generate. Finally, as the project matures, its final form emerges as a decomplexified system, layering research, artworks, research questions and writing, 
the system generated from its medium, its environment. Therefore, within this PhD, the project's final form, its system, having supported the emergence of introverted systems within each individual kinetic sculpture, was itself finally revealed as another introverted system. Like those systems that emerged within it, the research project's introverted system was autopoetic, embodying an ongoing circularly causal series of components, actions and emergences, each responding to another and then impacting upon the next. Its contained and self-producing nature, self-referentially organised for the sake of its own systematic continuance, as it filtered the environmental complexity that is the medium of the practice-led PhD research project. Thank you.